Die COVID help toelaag van 350 rand is heringestel en word ook aan meer mense uitbetaal, so die president sondag gaan aangekondig. Dit is uit baie oorde verwelkom. Op Mandela dag het die president ook gesê die regering oorweeg een basisse inkomse toelaag aan alle werkloses. Is meer toelaas die antwoord? Neil Kalman is die senior beleidsspecialist by die Instituut vir Economische Gerechtigheid en Mike Schussler is econoom en eienaar van economist.co.za. Gentlemen, welcome. I'm going to start with the 350 rand grant before we go to the basic income grant which is also on the table. This 350 rand grant has been extended until March next year. Mike and then Neil, is it necessary and is it affordable? Mark? I'm sure people feel it's necessary, but it's not really affordable. For the very simple reason is that we've already got a very high government expenditure in the country. We're running one of the biggest deficits in the world at the moment. And we've got to understand that at some stage, this has to be paid back. And there is no country at this stage in the world that has a basic income grant. Uh, Finland tried it with 2,000 people, uh, Iran tried it, and Mongolia tried it. Hasn't been very successful. We've already got 18 and a half million people on grants. We've only got 16 million people in jobs. If we add another 10 million, say, over a period of time, um, we're going to have virtually twice the number of people on grants than in jobs, and that's not sustainable. And our government already has one of the highest tax rates in the world, in the top 10 on overall taxes, other than security taxes. And security taxes are things like pensions, which we pay privately and sometimes are enforced on us as uh, workers in the, uh, South Africa. And the other thing is we need to look at fixed investment and government is at the moment the poorest fixed investment in the bottom 5% of countries in the world at less than 3% fixed investment to GDP and that creates jobs. Otherwise, we're going to have a lot more inequality and that's the problem. Thank you, Mike Neal. Necessary and affordable. Absolutely, uh, Valdemar. Good, good evening and to your listeners. Mike is unfortunately, with, with due respect, incorrect on a number of points. Uh, firstly, um, Alaska has a, a dividend that goes to all citizens um, coming out of their oil revenues. And a number of countries have no, are now implementing a basic income grant uh, in Wales, in Spain, and a number of other countries are discussing it as a result of the COVID crisis. The issue of affordability needs to be looked at in a dynamic way. And the best example that, uh, that people are, are, are pointing to at the moment is that of Brazil, which had a, a debt-to-GDP ratio of nearly 100% um, at, at the beginning of the COVID crisis and spent 4.5% of GDP uh, on a massive stimulus grant. And as a result, they brought the debt-to-GDP ratio down and they've got growth up to 5%. So we've got to think of these things in a dynamic way, not see it as a purely wasteful expenditure on people, but an investment in our society, which then reaps dividends. It's true, we can't simply focus on grants. There has to be a package of interventions, which includes both grants and jobs. And that's the issue, is that we need a comprehensive response. What we've seen from government in South Africa is a very timid response very reactive, um, only introducing the grant for a certain period, withdrawing it, coming under pressure from civil society. And it was only when we saw the social explosion recently that they reintroduced the grant. And if you look at all the evidence, the NITS cram surveys and other surveys by academics, there's a massive and growing hunger in our society. Uh, 10 million people in March uh, were identified as, as having been hungry, with three million children. So the point is our society is unviable in a situation where the majority of people don't have sufficient income in order to feed their children. And therefore the 350 Rand grant reintroduction until March is very important. It's insufficient and should be increased to the food poverty line of 585 Rand per person. I'd like to ask all your listeners and yourself and Mike, 
what you think you could do with 350 rand a month, which is basically just over 10 rand a day. It's the very least that we should provide to the members of our society who are unemployed and destitute through no fault of their own. They didn't bring COVID. They didn't bring unemployment. They are, um, they are trying to get through the situation the best they can. And it's not surprising that we saw a social explosion. If we want to avoid another one, we need to stabilize our society and invest in our people. Okay, Mike, let's accept for the purpose of the argument that it would be ideal to pay even more than 350 rand, 800 rand per person per month. Um, Colin Coleman last week argued this in Business Day. Um, and there are those who say, well, that'll mean that poor people will spend the money and poor people know how to spend money better than government. Uh, what would be the consequences, Mike, if we follow that route and we extend social spending exponentially? Um, is it possible to illustrate now uh, that the consequences would be deleterious, bad for the country, even bad, as some, has argued, as, um, as some have argued, even bad for the poor? Well, it would be bad for the poor for the very simple reason is that we've already got a 7% budget deficit. That would make the budget deficit even bigger. Our debt to GDP would grow. And I would say to Mr. Neil Coleman, you are talking absolute bollocks with the Brazilian debt. The Brazilian debt fell because their GDP increased again. But if you look over a 10-year period, that their GDP to uh, 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 or their debt to GDP has been increasing exponentially, and very much like ours. But other than Brazil, South Africa is the only country over 10 years to have a deficit of 5.3% on average per year. And that's put us into the crosshairs and makes our debt ever more expensive. And now, if we go and look at the poor people of South Africa, if you ask any of them, they would rather have a job. And we need to find ways to bring business into South Africa, not just foreign, but our own, and also people to create their own jobs. So I would argue for a much more relaxed rules and, for example, Mr. Neil Coleman himself was one of the people that asked for the minimum wages. And we saw between the first quarter of 2018 and the uh, uh, first quarter of 2019, or, I mean 2019 and 2020, uh, 150,000 jobs had disappeared. And they told us it wasn't going to disappear. So they live in cloud cuckoo land. Money, if it was growing on trees and made everybody happy and you just spent, then nobody in the world would have a problem. And they would, everybody would be on a basic income grant. But that's not the world today. And to put an end to this argument, very simply put, if we as a society want to bring down the highest unemployment rate in the world over the last 25 years, on average at 26% on the standardized unemployment, we need to rethink things. It's not about spending on the poor because we've taken so, uh, grants in South Africa from 2.3 million people at the end of 1989 or uh, 1998, sorry, uh, up to now to 18 and a half million people on social grants. We were told by many people that this would solve a lot of problems. It doesn't solve problems because when you have more people than you have people employed, on social grants, the money you, Mike, can never Mike, I have to cut you off there uh, to give Neil time to respond. Neil, your response. You have a minute. Yeah, no one said it solved all the problems. In fact, Valdemar said very specifically that you need a comprehensive package which combines both jobs and grants, and you need to invest in communities. The international literature and the current thinking very clearly shows that when you invest in communities, that has a multiplier effect. It, it has a multiplier effect in terms of spending in those communities. It encourages job seeking. It improves nutrition. It improves school going. It has a lot of developmental impacts. So Mike is seeing it from a co completely uh, archaic and, and, and out of date perspective. Even the institutions that he likes to quote, the IMF, the World Bank, etc., now accept and agree that grants have a highly developmental impact and call for much greater investment in these areas. You know, you've got to ask people like Mike, you know, what is their alternative? We hear a lot about structural reforms, about job creation, about education, but our unemployment rate has been growing despite all these attempts to, to invest in those areas. 
And the, the fact is that in the meantime, uh, there has to be something which acts as a floor, as a social security net for people. We have to provide an alternative while we develop those, uh, those, that economic investment. Neil and Mike, thank you so much. I know this conversation is not over. That's all we have time for tonight. Blij en geskakel, die Democraten in Washington het een onderzoek komitee in die lewe geroep, terwijl die Trump-Republikeine en die anti-Trump-Republikeine vir mekaar gloeien.